greatest challenge we're going to face in the future city is that our population is going to increase. There'll be 10 billion people on the planet. The biggest challenges we will face are simply to do with inequality. We're talking about access to things as simple as light. Water. Air quality. Food. The ability to move around the city freely. Even the spaces in which we're going to live. Some of the biggest challenges that are facing our cities in 2050 are going to be issues in waste, pollution. A city is a bit like a tree in the sense that it has a central trunk. It could be a huge trunk like a giant sequoia tree. But it needs an equally large and diverse root system in order to feed it. And so if we think of these root systems as tapping into biological systems like soils that produce food, or water and air that will sustain the life of the tree, then I think this is something that is really important to consider when we think about the design of these future cities. Everything ever created by humankind is in a landfill. We are a throwaway culture. Cities and urban planners need to really appreciate the diversity of spaces within an urban environment. We will actually develop technologies that are not mechanical, that deal with geometric spaces that are all the same, but technologies that can act more like nature does and exploit the unique conditions of particular environments. And so I think that our cities will actually be more living. The real city of the future is a city that recognizes that we have a relationship to the Earth's metabolism and that we are proud not of skyscrapers, not of the kind of commerce or the success of our kind of commercial society, but we're proud of the spectacle of our relationship with the environment. I'm talking about a future city where infrastructure is absolutely as uh, technologically advanced and as connected to the Earth as possible. And we could say not only does traffic uh, uh, work in our city, but our waste streams are incredibly efficient. In fact, waste has gone away entirely. It's always being upcycled and upcycled. I think in the future we're going to be building with many more innovative type materials. We might have to look at how we use waste, for example. We were thinking about uh, repurposing industrial sized machines that take uh, essentially piles of trash and make them into these very dumb bales or blocks of trash. And then those are just kind of stored or, or thrown aside. We actually are thinking of modifying the jaws of these industrial machines so that they can make puzzle-fitting geometries. Geometries that could fit together to form corbelled domes, vault systems, archways, service infrastructure, and contribute to foundations or sections of facades of buildings. We currently rely on a very centralised power system, an energy system. That is that we have large power stations creating the power that rely on fossil fuels. Those fossil fuels are running out. I believe we need to decentralise our power system. And that is that you locally create more power generation. And that might be on a building scale or even on a borough scale. We kind of call it energy democracy, if you like. what the fully self-sufficient model of a city should be. A city that has almost no inputs or outputs. A city that is absolutely radically self-contained, where it's producing its own food, it's confronting its own energy usage and creating its own energy. It's thinking of productive green spaces, where it's not just a, a kind of an open space to play frisbee or to, or to sit on a bench, but a space that is in somehow service to the infrastructure and into the environment. I think we're really trying to compound a whole host of different issues together, working underneath the umbrella of the environment so we can have cities that are truly sustainable and self-sufficient by 2050. We live in a time, a generation, that is all about reuse. If we can reuse the structures that exist and not demolish them and push them to landfill, then until that zero carbon energy is created, that's the most effective we can become. So we build around structures, on top of structures, and adapt them. And a lot of the work we do as architects is looking at how adaptable our designs are today in order to still be available and usable in the, um, the cities of the future. I 
think it would be very complacent to suggest that cities in 2050 are going to be better than the ones today. We could ameliorate and alleviate some of those inequalities by ensuring that we pay a lot of attention to infrastructures and how we get resources to people that really need them. I don't think that this is going to be globally possible and perhaps then the greatest challenge that we face is how to keep a level of humanity within our cities that makes us feel that we can still call ourselves a civilization.